you know, other things outside of just getting right in the pulpit and uh, getting straight to the word. Um, but we are a growing church, so I have to get it out when I can. Glory be to God. And, uh, and the balance I have to sort of stay in is getting out that kind of information um, as precise as I can and in enough time that I don't drag you out too long to where you get razzle dazzle from being from having to listen too long. Glory be to God. All right. And uh, with that said, um, you guys know uh, last week or this past week I was in at at a uh, retreat all week and uh, which was awesome. But the week before that, I was in a pastoral conference. OK, and uh, in the conference, there were. Um, a variety of notes. Uh, Brother Church, I have my bag back there. I want you to grab that out of my office for me, please. There were a number of notes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I didn't plan to go there, but I'll do what you say. Have mercy. That we received uh, in this uh, meeting for pastors and leaders. Now, these, everybody in this meeting predominantly were all, all everyone that looks like that. Bring that one too. Um, the all colors, whatever colors they are. And in this meeting, these were word of faith leaders. And uh, the presiding prophet, if you want to say that, of these word of faith leaders is Kenneth Copeland, which let me tell you, it is a honor to be even in the presence of anything uh, that man has to say and I'm telling you that you may not understand but a good portion of the health in the entire body of Christ worldwide right now traces back to that man Amen. you need to get an understanding of that now in this church there's a couple more that look any there's no more in that bag at all uh, in this church, you know, there's one thing that we don't do. We don't talk about preachers. Amen. We don't talk about any preachers. We don't talk about pastors. We don't talk about men and women of God in any way, form, or fashion, in any negative connotation. We're all, we all understand that, right? We've labored with that you, here in, in this ministry, right? And, um... So a, a couple of things that was shared uh, in this conference, this looks like, um, I have it here, a couple of the things that were shared was pretty, pretty interesting uh, to pastors. One of the main things they said that really stuck out to me, they said, if your church closes, particularly because of the pandemic, and if your community, if your community does not miss you, if they don't miss the church, not the pastor, if they don't miss the church, then that church did not line up in my own. And, and I'm paraphrasing this with the mission of the church that God has called for any New Testament church. Right. If your community does not miss you, you didn't do your job, right? And um, a couple of other things, a person made a statement, this is kind of funny, made a statement, uh, I want to say, uh, I won't say the, the pastor's name, but he got up and he said, and he's an awesome man of God, he said, he said, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell this or not, Chelsea. I don't know. This is one of them things. I don't know if it was invite only. I don't know, but I'm going to take a chance. And uh, they said that he said, Brother Copeland, I call you eternity. And he said, because you can preach for eternity. Like you can preach a long time. Like you preach a long time. <laughs> But then, <laughs> but then uh, a statement after that was made and they said, he said, listen, if God has called you to preach 20 minutes, then preach 20 minutes. Right. He said, but 
The difference with Brother Copeland is it's not preaching. It's information that will change your life forever. Yeah. And he said, typically, that kind of information you can't get out. It's very difficult to get that kind of information.